Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you today. I really appreciate this. Uh, this is a lecture that is based off of my dissertation, which is entitled, A Comparison of Methods for Sight Reading Development Utilizing Collegiate Saxophonists. The ability to sight read well has been cited as a required and highly regarded skill in music performance and education. Its necessity is frequently called upon to be used in rehearsal settings, performance situations, and auditions. For such an important skill, limited emphasis is, pla is often placed upon sight reading in higher education in comparison to other aspects of musicianship. As traditional music programs in the United States are commonly based upon the European conservatory approach to music education, a high emphasis is usually placed upon performance, in particular solo performance. The majority of time and attention is often given to the development of tone, technique, phrasing, and musicality. One author indicated that often the emphasis to perform well in solo performances is so great that it causes teachers to disregard other aspects of musical achievement, such as sight reading. Beyond this, musicians may be able to perform with an extremely high level without heavily relying on their sight reading ability. An example of this may be seen in the following. A dyslexic musician who was the holder of a demanding position as a music advisor recounted that he achieved his licentiate of the Royal Academy of Music on the piano because he was awarded such high marks on his performance of his rehearsed pieces, which he performed from memory, that his failure on the sight reading section was relatively immaterial. In one study, 221 MTNA certified teachers were surveyed. From this, it was found that 13% Rank the skill of sight reading as most important, 73% is highly important, 14% is fairly important, and 0% is somewhat important or not significant. Despite their views of sight reading being an important aspect of musicianship, only 7% indicated they taught sight reading in a systematic manner. This example indicates the contradiction between the value musicians and, in, and educators put upon sight reading and the time and attention that is given to it. Notwithstanding the limitations in addressing the skill of sight reading at the instructional level, high demands are still expected within and without the walls of academia. Thankfully, through music education research, more productive and effective approaches and methods in, the developing, in developing music sight reading are being discovered in a way that can benefit music instructors in the pedagogy of sight reading. The first study on sight reading <clears throat> was conducted in 1924 by Dr. Earl Hilbrand. Since 1924, over 700 studies have been conducted that have included sight reading. Several significant studies have been made that have found key indicators possessed by those with sight reading fluency. In one study, two researchers observed that oral discrimination Spatial temporal reasoning and technical proficiency combined were positive indicators of sight reading proficiency. In a study that involved pianists, researchers discovered a strong relationship between sight reading and time spent in regular personal practice, specifically sight reading practice in years in private lessons. Moreover, they noted that working memory capacity, akin to short term memory, positively influenced sight reading to a small degree. Two separate studies, one conducted in 1965 and another conducted in 1997, found a strong correlation between sight reading and playing by ear with high school students due to both tasks involving a combination of auditory and kinesthetic skills. Yet a third study involving oral skills found that recorded oral examples did not improve sixth and seventh grade woodwind players' sight reading. Across the studies that have investigated sight reading, one indicator has been documented as a key predictor of sight reading performance, the musician's ability to read ahead. This is referred to as eye hand span or EHS. The following research has shown the importance of reading ahead while sight reading music. In a study that involved pianists, researchers found that professionals and amateurs had eye fixation periods that were the same length of time. These fixation periods were either lengthened or shortened depending on the tempo of music when sight reading. However, professionals tended to look at or process more notes during these fixation periods. This indicates that advanced sight readers may possess a larger eye hand span 
than less skilled sight readers. In another study of eye hand span involving pianists, researchers measured eye fixation periods and perceptual window. They found that highly skilled sight readers had shorter fixation periods and larger perceptual windows than less skilled sight readers. This is contradictory to the previous study. However, this study substantiated previous evidence that advanced sight readers may be able to gather more information in a shorter amount of time. The skilled sight readers were also able to process and execute information faster, meaning they had a larger EHS than the less skilled sight readers. In an experimental study of eye hand span and sight reading, a researcher created a machine that progressively covered music notation as it was being sight read, thus forcing the musician to look ahead and increase their eye hand span. At the end of a six week period, the researcher found that by using the pacer machine, music students improved their sight reading competency and increased their eye hand span. Noticeably, those who used the pacer machine improved their sight reading ability in only six weeks for what the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale indicates should have taken two years. In a study that was conducted in 1943, equipment was used to record and measure eye movement while participants sight read rhythmic, melodic, harmonic examples or combinations of the three. The findings of this experiment give additional insight into the aforementioned study that documented that eye fixations were longer or shorter based on the tempo of music being sight read. Additionally, it was found that eye fixations, or pauses, were longer when sight reading rhythms rather than melodies. This indicated that processing time for rhythm may be longer than that for melody or pitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this indicated that processing time for rhythm may be longer than for melody or pitch. It was also discovered that an improved ability to comprehend rhythmic patterns increased sight reading speed. The improvement of rhythm recognition was also found to be more effective at developing sight reading speed than an increased ability to recognize pitch or melody. The ability to recognize and process rhythms quickly have been documented as having a positive effect on one's eye hand span. By instantly recognizing rhythms, the students can process the information more quickly and look ahead in the music. The importance and positive influence of rhythm reading and its effect on sight reading ability have been cited by several researchers. In a study of collegiate musicians, one researcher investigated the correlation between seven variables and sight reading ability. The seven variables included technical proficiency, rhythm reading, sight singing, grade point average, music theory grade point average, performance jury scores, and major instrument grade point average. It was found that the single greatest indicator of sight reading ability was the capacity to read rhythms. This research indicates that the study of rhythms, specifically at the college level, may be important when developing sight reading ability. In a study of high school wind band students conducted in Midwest public high schools, a researcher also investigated four cognitive skills and their rela relationship to music sight reading. These variables included musical, music sight reading and tonal rhythmic audiation, visual field articulation, spatial orientation and visualization, and achievement in math concepts and reading comprehension. From this study, the researcher found that rhythmic audiation, the mental activity when sound is not present, was influential in sight reading ability. The research indicates that the study of rhythms, even at the high school level, may be important when developing sight reading ability. In 1953, a study of violinists and, clarinet and clarinetists was conducted. It was discovered that more than half of all sight reading errors made, uh, made by participants were rhythmic. 
This finding supports the idea that there may be a relationship between rhythm recognition and sight reading ability as documented in other studies. From these findings, the researcher advised that in order to improve sight reading skill, greater emphasis could be placed on the study of sight reading rhythm, or study of rhythm. In another study with significant findings of rhythm and sight reading, junior high school bands practiced rhythms 30 minutes a week. A control group practiced playing rhythms on a single pitch with a strong emphasis to not use bodily movements, especially that of tapping their feet to the beat and clapping their hands to the rhythm. A second experimental group also practiced on a single pitch, but added the use of tapping of feet and clapping of hands as a central component to their 30 minutes of practicing rhythms each week. The finding of the study showed that both groups improved significantly in their sight reading skill. However, the experimental group, which used motion, improved, sight, improved significantly more than the control group. While the particular researcher noted, while this particular researcher noted that many studies have shown that the study of rhythm may benefit music performance, he indicated that many music educators fail to undertake the systematic teaching of rhythm. In an additional experiment conducted at a large university in the southern United States, the influence of selected components of musical notation on sight reading ability were examined. As part of the study, students sight read rhythms on a single pitch, as well, as well as rhythms and pitches combined. The results of this study surprised the researcher that found that students sight read both examples with similar ability, meaning that the inclusion of pitch did not hinder or help the sight reading ability of the participants. This substantiates previous studies that have documented that the element of rhythm may have a greater impact on sight reading than pitch. From this finding, it was also acknowledged that more research in the area of studying rhythm, especially at the college level, should be conducted. From the research presented, one attribute appears most predictive of positive sight reading ability, rhythm recognition. Though research has been conducted on sight reading and rhythm recognition, it has been indirect and limited. Further, much of the research on sight reading has been conducted with pianists or secondary school level participants. Little research on sight reading has been published using students of wind instruments at the college level. While studies have documented important indicators of sight reading competency, research needs to be conducted to compare methods of sight reading development. Those studies have shown that recognizing and reading rhythms are key predictors of increased skills at sight reading. There is insufficient information regarding the most effective ways to study rhythms. One popular and widely used method for studying rhythms with a wind instrument is practicing rhythms on a single pitch. This logical and common teaching technique is seen in many band method books to practice rhythms and has been documented as effective in one of the studies mentioned previously, the junior high study, where they counted and clapped. An alternative to studying rhythms on a single pitch was identified by myself and has been found in use by a university professor, Professor Levy, a fine arts department within an independent school district, and two method books, all with informally documented favorable results. This method has students practicing rhythms while utilizing scales simultaneously. Beginning music students commonly study scales and rhythm exercises separately to develop music performance competency. This method combines the two. The purpose of this study was to determine the effect of studying rhythms from Louis Belson's modern reading text in 4-4 syncopation studies designed to develop accuracy and speed in sight reading, one, using a single pitch, or two, using full range scales. By determining if both methods are equally or unequally effective in the development of sight reading, educators may make more informed decisions as to how they instruct students in sight reading and rhythm comprehension. Further, this study may be beneficial to the professional musician and student to make informed decisions as to how to develop their own sight reading ability. Beyond this, the experiment may document the effectiveness of sight reading rhythms on sight reading ability in a manner and design that has not been done previously. <clears throat> For this design, a pretest post test control group design was used. A pretest post test control group design is an experimental design in which the researcher pretests all of the participants. After pretesting, the researcher assigned participants to either treatment group one or treatment group two. 
The pre-post-test control group design is an effective design because the two groups experience the same conditions other than the independent variable. In the case of this study, the independent variable for treatment group one was practicing rhythms on a single pitch, and the independent variable for treatment group two was practicing four range scales. After the independent variables had been administered to the treatment groups, both groups were given a post-test. By doing this, the researcher was able to measure the effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable, the dependent variable being sight readability. This design was chosen because of the effectiveness in comparing participant groups, but, uh, sorry, effectiveness in comparing participant groups and in its ability to measure the difference in the amount of progress each group has made from the beginning of the study to after the implementation of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Another reason for this design, another reason this design was chosen was because of its common use in similar studies. The sample consisted of 74 college students who, enrolled, who were enrolled in saxophone lessons at the University of North Texas. This school was chosen for the study because of the large population of saxophone students and convenience in location. There were two requirements for participation in this study. The first was that the participants had to be 18 years or older. The second was that the participants had to be enrolled in applied saxophone lessons. A questionnaire regarding background information as it pertained to the study was utilized to describe the participants. Okay. When asked which of the following categories includes your age, 68 selected ages 18 to 25, 5 selected ages 26 to 35, and 1 selected 36 years or older. When asked which category included their major, three chose non-music major, 60 chose undergraduate music major, six chose master's level music major, and five chose doctoral level music major. When asked how many years they had performed or studied the saxophone, two indicated one to four years, 32 indicated five to eight years, three indicated nine to 12 years, six indicated 19 to 20 years, and one indicated 21 years or more. 43 participants indicated they had participated in an elementary, music, uh, elementary school music program. 31 indicated they had not. 69 participants indicated they had participated in a middle school band program, and five indicated they had not. 71 participants indicated they, had, uh, they participated in a high school band program, where three indicated they had not. Lastly, 33 participants indicated they had studied an instrument before beginning saxophone studies, and 41 indicated that the saxophone was their first instrument. Previous studies have used something called the Watkins-Farner Performance Scale to measure sight reading ability. Though most of these studies consisted of secondary school-age music students, at least one investigation was comprised of university students. Despite this, the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale was designed to be tested on beginning through advanced high school students. After examining the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale in consideration of the general sight reading, uh, the expected sight reading level of the participants in the study, it was believed that the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale would not suffice in difficulty for the population at the selected university. For this reason, participants were individually tested using a measurement instrument that was specifically designed for this study. This is not an anomaly, as past studies have used the sight reading measurement instruments other than the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale. The scale used in the current study followed the design of the Watkins Farnham in that it consisted of a pre-test, post-test, a pre-test, and a post-test. The pre-test and post-tests were written so as to be equitable in difficulty for measurement purposes. Each test consisted of three exercises or levels. The exercises in each of the tests were designed so as to increase in difficulty with each exercise due to the rhythmic and pitch content found therein. The pre and post tests were based off of reviewed literature and treatment material. Exercises were not transposed for each member of the saxophone family. Rather, students testing on alto, tenor, and baritone saxophones used the same test. Furthermore, after institutional review board approval had been obtained, the sight reading exercises, which comprised the pre and post tests, were tested and retested for reliability. Five saxophonists at the college who were not enrolled in lessons and 
and not participants in this study were tested and assessed on all six sight reading examples. The similarity of their scores indicated that the pre and post tests were equivalent in difficulty so as to be equitable for measurement purposes. The first exercises of the pre and post test were 16 measures in length. Rhythms for these exercises were extracted from pages 4 through 11 of Louis Belson's Modern Reading Text in 4.4. Pitches for these exercises were derived from number 6 of Furling's 48 Famous Studies. Exercise 2 of the pre and post tests were 20 measures in length. Pitches of these exercises were derived from Relaxing with Lee in the Charlie Parker Omnibook. The rhythms for these exercises came from pages 14 through 23 of Modern Reading Text in 4.4. Exercise 3 of the pre and post tests were 20 measures long. Rhythms for these exercises were collected from pages 34 through 43 of Modern Reading Text in 4.4, and, uh, and the pitches were extracted from Bluebird of the Charlie Parker Omnibus. The sight reading tests were assessed and scored by Smart Music as they were performed. As mentioned previously, the Watkins Farnham Performance Scale has been, has been used often to measure sight reading and has become an industry standard in the measurement of sight reading improvement. The Watkins Farnham is limited in its, measure in its measuring in that it cannot reliably measure tone quality, vibrato, musicality, and idiomatic phrasing or interpretation. In fact, there is no measurement tool at this time that can allow researchers to measure musicality, phrasing, tone, and intonation simultaneously in a sight reading test with any sense of reliability or objectivity. Of course, musicians would consider all of these aspects as necessary components of sight reading. However, the researcher was only able to measure the correct pitch at their correct time for the current study. By using smart music software as a measurement tool, pitch and rhythm can be assessed in sight reading performances. The opportunity to utilize smart music in sight reading evaluation has allowed for a more objective, reliable, and valid approach to measurement than has been possible with human judges. Smart music has been tested and documented several times in studies for its reliability, validity, and accuracy, and is considered the standard in music education assessment software. Smart music is an interactive, music learning subscription-based software. It is designed to be used with standard instrumentation for band, orchestra, and voice. Smart Music contains a database of tens of thousands of pieces for use in practice and testing situations. Musicians may download any work from the Smart Music repertoire database to their home computer or tablet. By the smart, beyond the Smart Music library, custom Smart Music files may be created by first creating the sheet music in Finale, then exporting it as a Smart Music file. That's what was done in this study. So let me, <clears throat> let me explain to you or demonstrate to you some of the aspects of smart music. Um, there are several functions in smart music. First off, we have the sheet music displayed. And you can make this full screen or regular screen, depending on if you're using it at home and if you want to practice that way to maximize your, maximize your screen space. Also, as I mentioned, students that were on alto, tenor, and berry read off the same sheet music. So what we would do is in the transpose section, for example, if a student came in on a tenor, is we would transpose it down to fourth, and this would allow smart music to assess it properly in the right key. Also, there's a metronome function, which can go all the way down to 40 beats per minute and all the way up to 280. This is for personal practice. But in this instance, for, we're going to be using sight reading example one. Uh, Pre-test one, it was played at 108 beats per minute. Now, also, with the metronome, you can have options to have the click on or off. You can have it accent down beats, play subdivisions, count one bar or two bars as an intro, or you can have a voice count off. We're just going to use the one bar count off and have it accent the down beats. Also, to, to help the students um, hear the metronome, we, I used a, the powered monitor so you could hear it clearly, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear it from just the laptop speakers. Um, we also could have used headphones, but I felt that that would have maybe felt unnatural. So we went ahead and used this. However, it had to be set up in such a way so that the microphone was far, away, far enough away from the speaker so that it didn't pick up the metronome, right? Or it would have assessed those metronome clicks as wrong notes. 
but it needed to pick up the saxophone really clearly. So that's why we have some of the, the spacing, why we do, why it's not any closer. So it's about six feet away. And then also I have the volume set at about four fifths or 80% so that it accurately will assess just the saxophone. Also, <clears throat> at the top in the controls, we have a provide sight reading options, which will allow the software to count off 30 seconds before you're allowed to start playing. So I've asked Brandon Brown to help me, and he's going to play through exercise one. We'll see if we can keep this from falling. So I'm going to hit the provide sight reading options, which will give us the 30 seconds. And here we go. You have 30 seconds to look over the test. A familiar experience for some of you. Now you get to sit on this end with me. <laughs> okay, five, four, three, two, one. You'll have four counts that you can get. applause. So as you may have noticed, I asked Brandon to include some mistakes so you could see what happens with the Smart Music software. We have these green notes here, we have some black notes, and then we also have some red notes, okay? Um, so let me explain a little bit about what those are. But let's see if I can readjust this so I can see what's going on on the slide while I continue the presentation. So as you were able to see, uh, Smart Music was able to score and assess his performance. When you look at the screen there, you were able to see the green note heads, which indicated that the notes were performed correctly. You were able to see red note heads, uh, which indicated incorrect notes. These red note heads were also placed in the relative time and pitch in which they were performed. Black note heads, there were a few in there, meant that no note was performed at that time just nothing played. At the end of each performance, Smart Music provided a percentage based on the number of correct pitches versus the number of pitches that were played incorrectly or not played at all. Yours are around 84%. I don't remember exactly, but it's about 84%. The three percentages from the exercises were added together to create the scores for the pre-test and the post-test. The possible scores, uh, the possible scores for the pre- and post-test range from 0 to 300. After the pretest was administered, participants were blocked into one of two treatment groups. Both treatment groups were assigned modern reading text in 4-4 for all instruments. As previously stated, rhythm recognition has been documented as a positive indicator of sight reading ability. Music educators have also tended to agree that the study of rhythm is an effective approach to sight reading development. 
Bellson's book was chosen for the study because of its wide use and prominence among musicians and educators. This method book, which consists of sequentially based rhythm exercises, is divided into 17 chapters. Each chapter is made of exercises that highlight a specific rhythmic pattern. Patterns are written on a single pitch, bass clef E. Students in treatment group one were taught how to utilize this book by playing rhythm exercises on the single pitch of C2 on the saxophone. Students in, the treatment, in treatment group two were taught how to utilize this rhythm book by playing full range scale, major scales using the entire range of the saxophone, beginning with the tonic of a scale and changing to the next pitch as each rhythmic note changed. Can you go ahead and play this for us? So I'll count you off, okay? So you can go ahead and talk. So this is treatment group one. One, two, three, exercise, thus creating inequitable conditions between the two groups. The groups were assigned to study for modern reading text in 4-4 for all instruments, 10 minutes a day, five days a week for the duration of the study, which was eight weeks. In their private practice, using the method which was assigned to them, they were instructed to repeat the exercises if their assignment was completed before the end of the prescribed practice period. The assignment schedule for both groups is shown right here. In addition to the weekly assignment schedule, each participant was asked to log their rhythm practice times on an online practice record. Out of the 74 participants, 47 turned in online practice records. 22 of these were from treatment group one and 25 were from treatment group two. The total number of recorded minutes practiced by all students was 12,204 minutes or 203 hours. The total number of recorded minutes practiced by treatment group one was 5,381, or about 89 hours, and the total number of recorded minutes practiced by treatment group two was 5,840, about 97 hours. It should be noted that the amount of practice is an additional extraneous variable in the study's results. Both treatment groups were taught by, the, by their saxophone instructors in their respective studios which are located here in the College of Music. At the beginning of each private lesson, saxophone instructors followed up with each student by selecting one to three lines from each page of the week's assignment and asked the student to perform this in each weekly lesson. Students were informed that their, that their preparation on these assignments would be taken into consideration for their weekly lesson grade. The goal tempi for these assignments were from 108 beats per minute to 132 beats per minute. However, it was emphasized to teachers and students that accuracy was more important than speed. At the beginning of this study, students were informed that both treatments had been found effective in the development of sight reading, but that the current study was being conducted to see if the treatments were equally effective or if one was more effective than the other at the university level. Furthermore, teachers were instructed to refrain from expressing their opinions in regard to one treatment being more effective than the other. Rather, if asked by a student, they, will, they refer to what had been stated regarding the effectiveness of both treatments at the beginning of the study. So let me quickly summarize the entire study. The aim of this study was to determine whether practicing rhythms on a single pitch or practicing rhythms combined with full range scales or strategies that were equally effective or not in the development of sight reading ability at the college level. A pre-test, post-test control group with control group design was used for this study. The participants in this study consisted of college-level saxophone students. These participants were administered a sight reading pretest at the beginning of an eight-week period. 
After the administration of the pretest, students were blocked into two equitable groups. Both groups were assigned to practice out of modern reading text in 4-4 for all instruments. Syncopation studies designed to develop accuracy and speed in sight reading by Louis Belson. The first group was assigned to practice rhythms using a single pitch. The second group practiced rhythms utilizing full range scales. Each group practiced rhythms with their assigned treatment method for 10 minutes a day, five days a week, for an eight week period. In addition, each participant's private lesson instructor followed up by having the participants play examples from the week's rhythm assignment. At the end of the treatment period, participants were administered a post-test. Pre and post-tests were evaluated and found to be equitable in difficulty and accurate for measurement purposes. Each test was assessed and scored as it was performed by Smart Music Software, which has been documented as reliable and accurate in the assessment, in assessment and, is, and is considered the standard in music education assessment software. A two-way mixed ANOVA was employed for statistical processing of data using the software statistic program, SPSS. From this, it was found that the main effect for the between subjects factor of treatment was not significant, meaning that participants increased their skill regardless of treatment. Again, participants increased their skill of sight reading regardless of the treatment group. Further, it was discovered that the main effect for the within subjects factor of time was significant, meaning that there was a significant and equal improvement in sight reading ability by both groups from pretest to post-test. Again, there was a significant and equal improvement in sight reading ability by both groups from pretest to post-test. This indicates that the practice of rhythm contributed to the improvement of sight reading ability. Lastly, there was no significant interaction between time and treatment. As I just said, both treatment groups significantly, yet equally, improve their sight reading ability. This implies that the specific method used for developing sight reading ability is less pertinent. What this may imply is that a better match of practice technique to each student's ability may have achieved different results. The reasons for this outcome can be many. One in particular is worth mentioning. It was noted by some instructors that some participants placed uh, in treatment group two struggled with the ability to practice rhythms combined with full range scales. In these instances, it was felt that the students may have benefited more from practicing rhythms on a single pitch, or even by counting and clapping the rhythm as these exercises appeared more appropriate for their skill level. <clears throat> Further, it was found that some students had trouble deciphering rhythms completely. In this case, time may have been needed to be spent teaching basic rhythmic principles. Conversely, there were students placed in treatment group one and two who easily prepared each week's assignment in the time allotted. From them, or for them, practicing rhythms on middle C or with full range scales may not have been significantly challenging. In both of these cases, the exercises and treatments assigned to the students may have, may have either been too easy or too hard for their skill level. When choosing a method for practicing rhythms, the student's experience and ability should be taken into consideration. In addition, a sequentially based approach to learning rhythms may be desirable as students' rhythm recognition skills can vary. There was a significant change or increase in participant sight reading from, beginning, from the beginning of the study to the end, indicating that both treatment groups significantly benefited from their practice. This finding evidences that the practice of rhythms was effective in the development of sight reading ability. The treatment, the treatment period for this study was eight weeks long. Participants were instructed to practice rhythms five days a week for 10 minutes a day over an eight week period. Students would have practiced rhythms in a cumulative 400 minutes or six hours and 40 minutes per participant. The effects of time suggest that the more time spent on practicing rhythms, the more the ability to sight read may be improved. This all may indicate that the longer the treatment period, the more one's sight reading may improve. These results give evidence of the importance and positive influence sight reading had on sight reading improvement. Sorry. These results give evidence of the importance and positive influence rhythm reading had on sight reading improvement. 
and is in agreement with previous studies. At the college level, it may be pertinent that music educators devote time and attention to the study and practice of rhythms. By doing this, they may better assist their students in the development of sight reading ability, which can consequently and positively influence their music making experience and future career. The interaction between treatments and time is not significant. Overall, students increase from the beginning to the end of the study regardless of the technique they used. The participants increase their sight reading skill with both treatments. Again, this demonstrates that the amount of time spent practicing rhythms may have been more effective or more telling than the specific method used. Sorry, may have been more telling than the specific method used, at least in regard to the methods used in this study. Whereas the literature has indicated that the responsibility of sight reading development of students be placed upon band, band and ensemble directors at the middle and high school levels, this may not present itself as appropriate or practical at the university level. Instead, the responsibility for developing sight reading skills may need to be placed with the applied lesson teacher. Applied lesson teachers may wish to incorporate not only the weekly practice of rhythms into their curriculum, but also incorporate sight reading examinations into semester performance examinations, if this is not already being done. As eye hand span and rhythm recognition have been recognized as positive indicators of sight reading ability, further research should be conducted to find correlations between these two components of the, uh, <clears throat> between these two components of the reading of music notation. Many online sources exist for the purpose of developing sight reading ability. Of the, one of these, sightreadingfactory.com, creates rhythm and sight reading exercises based on criteria and difficulty selected by the user. In addition, it features a disappearing measures option that functions similarly to the pacer machine, which was talked about in the review of literature. The pacer machine is not currently available for user purchase. Further research needs to be conducted to investigate if the feature of disappearing measures on sightreading.com has the same effect on sight reading as Streckfuss's pacer machine. Those studies have indirectly found that rhythm affects the speed of eye hand span more so than pitch, research should be conducted that directly investigates the effects of rhythm reading on eye hand span. In this study, some instructors indicated that there were students in treatment group one who found practicing rhythms on a single pitch too easy, thus not presenting a challenge. Conversely, there were students in treatment group two who found practicing scales over rhythms too difficult and perhaps would have been better served by practicing rhythms on a single pitch. For this reason, the development of a sequentially based system for rhythm reading which can properly benefit musicians of all levels, beginner to the professional, may need to be developed. This does conclude my lecture. Do you have any questions? Yeah? So you say how the hand is direct, like directly synonymous with sight reading ability? It is, it is it's correlated. So they found significant correlation between those two things, that the larger the high hand span, greater the ability to suffer. It doesn't mean that it's the same, but it does mean that there's a correlation between the two, a high correlation. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah? Uh, it's uh, tangential, but uh, the disappearing measure, does it disappear like the me measure you're supposed to be playing disappears and so you have to look ahead or like, what measure disappears when it says disappearing measure? That's a function. good question. I thought about giving a demonstration, but time didn't allow it. What it does is it gives you four beats of a click off, mm -hmm. and you read the first measure, then it disappears. Reads the second measure, and then it disappears. It's interesting, when studying eye hand span, they found that, that musicians had what are called regressions, where they would go back and look at previous material. Perhaps this is looking at the previous harmonic language that was going on, but we don't know for sure, but we would have these regressions and go back. This, by making that, the previous measure disappear, keeps us from having those regressions. However, if you'll wait four more beats, you'll have to look at the measure ahead of what you're playing. Does that make sense? So you count, it counts off one, two, three, four, you wait it again, four more clicks, and at that point, you have to read the measure ahead, and that's how it would do both. And Streckfuss had this, or the individual Streckfuss who 
who did the pacer machine had students practice both ways. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. It's worth checking out. Any other questions? Yes. Question. In terms of phrasing the swinging or playing the straight. Yes. Reading is reading. Playing the correct rhythm is, is correct either way. However, I was wondering um, it would be interesting to see those musicians that are more comfortable swinging phrases as opposed to those who are more that are more comfortable playing the phrases straight. Yes. I I don't know, but that's a wonderful question, and that would be a great idea for a study yeah. in which one would have sight reading examples of both and test a population and see if individuals struggle more on the swung or on the even. Yeah. Yeah, but it would have to be done in a, in a separate study. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking about this. You did a great job. Well, yeah. I keep thinking. Any other questions? Thank you again very much for your time.